Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment you are going to hear the voice of a man who will tell you some tremendously important facts. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. It's a very unique and wonderful day on the podcast. We have John Gray. John Gray is the penultimate relationship coach. Of course, you've heard of John Gray. John Gray is the number one relationship expert in the world. He's the author of the groundbreaking book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, the best-selling relationship book of all time. His numerous relationship and health books have sold over 50 million copies in 45 different languages in 150 different countries. For the last 40 years, John Gray has helped millions of people improve their relationship, communication, and health. He follows his own advice and has been and has experienced happy and a very happy marriage. I'm reading his biography from 2017. John uh, regularly gives workshops and talks around the world, helping men and women better understand and respect their differences in both personal and professional relationships. Uh, you, you can, uh, he has many books, blogs, and free online seminars or can be found at marsvenus.com. And you can also find some information about coaching at marsvenuscoaching.com. Uh, I could continue to talk. We've all seen, I remember seeing John all the way back, I think it was on the Donahue show. I mean, I've seen. Yes, <laughs> yes. Right. I remember that too. Right. I have seen. <laughs> Thank it. you, Phil Donahue. Thank, Thank you, Phil Donahue. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. I'm honored. It's, it's amazing to um, talk to somebody with such a wealth of experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> this is a tough topic. And for, and it's very interesting when I go back and read the original Mars Venus book, and then your your newest Beyond Mars and Venus, and I kind of was as of before this interview, I was kind of thinking about my own experiences in relationships and how much it's changed. Yeah. I, before we start, I want to get an idea. Um, you got in on this, helping people uh, with their relationships. Tell me about the changes that you've seen in the world through the filter of a, a relationship coach. Yes, uh, the big the big changes. I saw it. Uh, dramatically changing in the 90s even it was starting in the 80s we were more interested in romance and relationship world is particularly guided by women okay now right here's a difference between men and women even to this day often if a couple wants a divorce women will say you know i do this and this and this and i don't get back right men will say john i do this and this and this and she's never happy <laughs> do you see those are two opposite points of view right men will say if she's happy i'm happy women will say look i give so much and i'm not getting back and therefore that's why i'm unhappy so that was true then that's true now but the world has changed dramatically and if you just sort of step back for a minute and look at statistics you see there's twice as many people are single now than before uh, divorce is still about 50%, but it's of a much smaller group of people. Think about all those single people that didn't get married is they would have, they had got married, they would have been divorced. See, they, the world has changed and how it's changed requires new skills. Now, I'm not going to take a long time talking about skill, but somebody just recently told me a story. I'm taking a class on singing because I seem to have lost my singing voice. My children say I never had it, but <laughs> anyway, so in this class on singing, he was talking about everything requires a skill. And if you play Monopoly, most people think it's just luck. He asked me, I said, I'm sure it's skill, but it's lucky if I win because I don't know what the skill is. And he just listed out eight things that if you know those, you will always win in Monopoly if the other people don't know them. It's like where to put your hotels and whatever. There's certain places that people will land on more than others if you know the game. Right. It was amazing. So I can beat anybody who doesn't know those skills in, Mono in Monopoly, the game. So the same thing in relationship. If you know the skills in relationship, you don't have to keep going from one partner to another. And if you're in a marriage, you don't have to lose the attraction with these skills. Mm -hmm. and the skills were never invented before, never before the ones I talk about. And that's because men and women's priority was not lasting romance. It's never been lasting romance. Why is romance so important and good communication so important today? Because romance and good communication help women who are now way on their more masculine side. They're more independent. Once you're more independent, your requirements change. Mm -hmm. 
You don't need a man to make money as much. You need a man to be emotionally supportive of your ability to be happy. Women today are more stressed than ever before. And this is again, studies show. When a woman goes to the workplace, her stress levels double as opposed to when she's at home in a, in, in a, in a personal relationship where she's not working. When she goes to the real workplace, her stress levels double. And when she comes home from the workplace, her stress levels double again if she's got a job outside the workplace. Now, if I just said that, it would be a good argument for women. You should not be so independent. You shouldn't go into the workplace. But I think a woman's independence is an evolutionary shift. It's just gone a little too far. <laughs> is that if you shift to your independent side, which I think is great because there were so many dysfunctional relationships where a woman can get out of. There are many more functional relationships. You know, we kind of rewrite history as if uh, men and relationships were all dysfunctional. They weren't. Right. I grew up in a family who was very functional. My mother <laughs> basically was very happy with my dad. He had a good job and he wasn't an angry person. What more could you want if you're a woman? But today, expectations change. And of course, if he was an angry person and didn't make enough money, the family would suffer. It'd be she needs to have the freedom to get out of that situation. So freedom is really good. And I think it's also good for a woman's psyche as well as a man's psyche. A woman is much more uh, whole and capable of being multi-orgasmic if she's on her male side and her female side. So this is very interesting. So, how, so if the new challenge is we want more romance, why did that suddenly come about? Because when women are on their male side, they need potent medicine to bring them back to their female side. And that's a man who's knowledgeable in the new ideas that I teach in my Beyond Mars and Venus. Beyond Mars and Venus means beyond the traditional roles of men and women. I'm not against the traditional roles for those who choose that. It's just that for those who don't choose that, how do you keep the passion alive? And in both cases, whether you're traditional or not, people today want lasting love and romance. How do you achieve that? So I have new skills to do that. Well, it, I learned a lot when about six years ago, I had left uh, a, a married relationship and had to start over in the dating world. And it was completely different than before. You know, I didn't, I, I didn't meet somebody at a party or go to a bar or anything like that. It was, it was an online experience and it was completely different. And in many ways um, that my friends had related to, it felt like I was ordering something from Amazon. I would go on... <laughs> <laughs> like on Tinder, it was like I'm going on. I'm choosing um, all the elements that I want, and it it, it, it uh, there's something that I lost in that spontaneous moment where you meet somebody and wow, this could be a really interesting experience. Um, instead of ordering it up, and there it, it, it have you noticed a, a change in relationships because of that? Some benefits and some pitfalls. Yeah, uh, it's a big story, but just to say in support of what you just said. Uh, there's a company called HeartMath where they've measured frequencies and fields around people. So mm -hmm. we all have an energy, everything has an energy field and you can measure the energy field of things. And when your heart is open, your energy field can go out 30 feet. If your heart is closed, it shrinks in and they measure that. This is science. Okay. So you can't, you know, there's so many things you can't see radio waves, you know, you can't see them. You can't see uh, the the, the Wi-Fi, you know, but it's there, you know, right. out of the air comes you and me. Where did that come from? So there's a lot of things our senses don't pick up, but are real and affect us. Well, our energy fields go out and it turns out that our energy fields is what determines our attraction to somebody. And even if they're a, a wonderful human being, if your energy fields aren't mutually interdependent, see, there's an interdependence we, like I need food, yet everybody needs food, but some people need more artichokes. Some people need more fruit. Some people need more meat. Other people need not so much meat. So our attraction to others is our energy fields actually connect and we feel good. Like if, if you have a problem and let's say I have the right answers for you, our energy fields will connect and you'll feel really good. If I'm, if I'm talking to somebody and they don't need what I have to say, they won't, they won't be so excited. They won't be so inspired by it. So it's really energetics 
is, and I only talk about energy, Brian. I don't do it with anybody else, but you said you talk about everything. So right. I presume everything. our audience is open to yeah. understanding yeah. energy fields. And, you know, it, and, and some people have a particular dominant energy field that will attract people that need that energy, like a food, you know, right, right. Is, we're turned on to food. And so we're sexually turned on to a certain type of energy field over there because it goes beyond physical. You know, you, you can have, I was so shocked as a young man being in bed naked with a woman who was had all the turn on features you'd see in the front of a magazine and having sex with her. And then three months later, being in bed with her, liking her and not being turned on by her body at all. Because that's all that I was excited about was the right. physical part of it. I didn't have the energy connection with the emotional part, with the mental part, with the spiritual part. Our values uh, just weren't the same or wasn't resonant with each other. So there's sameness, but there's also difference. Mm -hmm. And it's the differences that create the attraction, but the attraction has to be complementary. So there has to be similar values. So there you got two things going on. You can't calculate that with your mind. Your brain right. cannot calculate you know, you can't figure out how you're converting one amino acid into you're, you're eating your chicken and you're getting your your five HTP, you're getting other hormones, you're getting other and then converting that into serotonin in your brain or converting this into massive stuff is going on inside of us that took millions and millions of years. You know, even a fantastic computer that can do so much. You know, when we do our Internet, uh, go on people's sites, they have a little test to pick out, you know, our, which squares have cars. You know why they use that? Because a computer cannot look at pictures and know which one has cars in it. <laughs> it can't which do that. Crazy. A child yeah. can do that. So right, right. It's, it's just your mind is so limited in its ability to pick the right person. That's why we have something called intuition. That's something we have called arousal. That's sometimes we have curiosity. And these are different responses we have to people. And if you don't have the energy fields to work with, what you get is a, an aberrated response okay which is usually it can it can trigger your fantasy and somebody that could turn you on just by talking to them when you're in their energy field nothing happens and particularly when you have fake pictures on your site it's very very destructive because if you have fake pictures then when you meet in present if you don't have that energy field connection you're going to think oh i'm not a beautiful person and that's the only reason they're not connecting with me or when she finds out you're a man and you don't have a job <laughs> Right, <laughs> which is a given i mean it's really good to have a job if you want a woman to be turned on to because historically for millions of years that between the male and female females are more vulnerable and then they make babies so they need somebody who can protect them and provide to them at their vulnerable moments not all the time but there are vulnerable moments and a man has to fulfill certain requirements right. and historically just to bring it back to your question about how things have changed i grew up in a functional family where my father had a good job made enough money to live in a nice neighborhood with a country club down the street and polite and a private police force. So it was safe. Mom could say, go and play kids. That was it. Ring the bell when the meal was made. She also had someone that helped her as a cook at the house. You know, it was a, you know, not full time, but would help part time. So that's what she needed. And she felt safe and she felt supported. My dad's money provided that. He had a good temperament for her. He didn't have any romantic skills. He didn't know how to listen. He didn't have anything I'm teaching men what to do because uh, women have a different requirement at a different era of life. She wasn't on her male side all the time. Not to say she didn't have a male side. Her male side, she was the CEO of the house. She had six boys and one girl. You know? right. <laughs> you gotta manage all of us. That's a lot of male sides, but it's a very... It's a very, it balances your hormones for those fortunate enough to be in a functional heterosexual relationship with children. What happened, that's my expertise, is when you're in that situation, what happens as nurturing your children, you're expressing both your male side, which is the boss of the house, and your female side, because you're serving for love. As soon as you're serving for money, you're way on your male side. When right. you serve for love, <laughs> then you're producing female hormones. And women need way more female hormones than men. This is simple biological truth. Men need way more male hormones than women. Women have testosterone, just men have 10 to 20 times more. And if they don't, they're depressed, or they're angry, or they're irritable. Hormonal imbalance is a major mood controller for all of us. It, your um, answer really brought up memories of my own parents. And, 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 and you, know, you, you realize so much of what we know about a romantic relationship 
comes from what the way we saw our parents act. We we saw you know my dad and mom never divorced. We're together forever. My dad never really showed any affection towards my mom. Right, no affection. None, of, none at all. They, were, they weren't in disagreement with it. They weren't like pushing each other away. They weren't right. going to the therapists. I've got all these problems with my marriage. <laughs> right. So in, in my mind, it, I, um, affection is not a part of a relationship until uh, later I had to learn that because I was looking up to my dad as, well, he didn't show any affection. So I'm going to act like my dad because, you know, seemingly in my mind, I see that he was successful because he didn't divorce my mother. But and I don't know if they were truly happy, but then maybe that was no, another. No, there were. No. The people have been happy throughout history. You know, we have this painted picture. You know, right. I'll tell you something like in the past, my brothers, when they misbehaved, my dad said, pull down your pants, bend over. He used a whip and whipped them. <laughs> yeah. Nobody thought that was anything wrong with that. They right. turned out okay. They're not looking at their childhood as being abusive and terrible. By the I'm number five child. By the time I came along, my mother convinced my dad, I don't think this whipping thing, we're from Texas, doesn't really work. <laughs> so my dad didn't do it, but the other brothers would be jealous. So he'd whip the chair and have me make noises. <laughs> so I never got whipped, but I turned out okay, right. better than the others for sure. But we don't look back at our parents who did the things people did at that time as bad. You know, it's just, we rewrite history as we can't do it from the point of view we have now about what's good and what's not. That's what was then. And that's what was done. And that was needed in some way for those brothers. My mother said, John's a really sensitive boy. I don't think you need to do that. Years later, I did a, I, I taught, wrote a whole book called Children from Heaven, which is how you raise children without having to use violence, okay? A different form of punishment right. but setting limits on things, time out, good communication, motivation skills, hearing them, but not letting them control you. So not spoiling your children by letting them get away, but not by using violence or threat to control them. So this is a whole new way of parenting. It's either modern parents, a lot of them just if your child's crying and upset, you say, okay, I'll give you the ice cream. <laughs> Terrible right. to do. Everybody needs to learn that when you're emotionally upset because you can't get what you want, you don't have to get what you want to be happy. You have to just know, how do I become happy not getting what I want? And the way you do that with a child is you listen to them and you validate their emotions and then you tell them what you want them to do and they do it and you show them lots of love and appreciation. It's a whole nother style. It's, it's skills. It's a whole new set of skills where we can grow up without this feeling that I'm not good enough and I have to change for you in order to be good enough. And when you have that childhood experience, there's this sort of anxiousness and this pressure that I have to do more in order to feel I'm lovable and I'm accepted or I'm a success. And these are all things therapy is starting to teach people. I just teach parents how to teach their children so the kids don't have to go to therapy to learn that. And I teach men in my book, Beyond Mars and Venus, a lot of my therapist skills for men to know. And then she doesn't have to go to a therapist and complain about her husband. And I simplify down the basics of being a, a good therapist for a woman. And it, it's all in my books. You just, it's between the lines. Now I bring it out. It's like in, in one of the chapters in Men Are From Mars, it's like women need to talk to feel better. So I explain that. Now I explain that when, when a woman feels I can share what I feel with you, she feels safe. When she feels safe, the hormone oxytocin goes up. As research shows that when oxytocin goes up, stress levels go down. But why does oxytocin go lower your stress levels? Because women have another need to regulate stress and that's estrogen levels. So when a woman feels safe, then she can depend on a man and ask for his support and get his support. And then her estrogen goes higher and higher. And that's how she eventually learns to be multi-orgasmic is that she can be both on her male side and her female side, which is the male side basically says, hey, if I'm not getting something, I can ask for it. Just like in the work world, you have to close the deal, right? A lot of women secretly go, I shouldn't have to ask. Well, that's out of date, immature thinking. And my mother, she didn't have to ask for anything because already before they got married, she checked out, he's everything I want. Got a good job. He's polite. He's a gentleman. He doesn't get angry about stuff. He's a, and, and that was it. And so she's like, hey, I got more than everybody else. Pretty good, you know? And so, and she loved her life. She wanted to be a mother. And that was one of her goals. And now women are growing up and they want to be more than a mother. That's okay. But when you're over on that male side, you're not going to be making as many uh, 
female hormones, that would be oxytocin, that would be estrogen, that would be progesterone. These are the main ones that control her mood of well being. If she doesn't have the right amount and the right stimulation to produce those hormones, then in her brain, she will feel overwhelmed, easily stressed, and unhappy. And, and then it goes on from there to complaining and judging and criticizing, which brings relationships down. And he doesn't know how to support her at those times. If she starts to complain, he'll just complain back. This is like men are playing tennis, okay? <laughs> you want to complain? <laughs> I can complain back. I can even serve harder than you, okay? So right. it's idiotic. You know, men in the old days learned never, ever be angry with a woman. Never, ever speak if you're angry. You just don't do that. Uh, men today, they all conditioned by psychology. Oh, you need to talk about your feelings. Women say, oh, well, tell me how you feel. I see, I, you know, man will sort of be a, feel a little bruised by what she said, and he needs some time to recover. And she'll think, oh, no, no, we can do therapy now. Tell me what you're feeling. As soon as you're upset and a man and you start talking about your feelings, you're in a big argument. Why would you feel that? But that's not the case. How could you say that? You should know I love you. Why are you trusting me? All the arguments, this is actually a men are from Mars at develop it in a modern tone and beyond Mars and Venus, which is, I looked at the anatomy of an argument between man and woman, which is almost always true. Now it's a little, it shifts and it has a different view, but the basics of it, woman is unhappy about something. Man hears that and says, well, I'll do this and this and this, or you shouldn't feel that way. He's going to do something to disagree Fix with it, her, basically. You or should disagree, right. Yeah, he's going to disagree with her. So he's going to solve her problem some way. Right. right. And as soon as he say, well, you shouldn't be so upset about that, or I didn't really see that, or I didn't mean that, but this is what I was doing. It doesn't mean I don't love you. So he's going to give his excuse, his explanation. Women even have a phrase for that now, which is mansplaining. <laughs> he's going to explain so as soon as he starts to explain why she shouldn't be so upset with him now she's going to explain to him why she is upset with him and then he's going to explain more why she shouldn't be so upset with him sounds so, familiar it, yeah it's every <laughs> argument you know right. basically now it, it can change it does change when men are more on their female side then they start to look at what the problem is which really throws a woman way into her male side. And now you get an argument the other direction. Right. So we have to So when I look about gender, I look at the hormones of gender and a man is always most attentive, compassionate, interested when he loves a woman, but he's listening to her. If she's listening to him and she loves him, she will become more like a mother. Okay. Right. She's not going to, it's, he's, he, She's making him a child. So many women also will say, oh, I feel like my husband's a child. Okay, no sexual attraction at all. And right. many women will say, why do I even want a husband? Uh, it's like having another child. I've got two, that's plenty. Because they didn't ever learn how to use a man to bring them back to their female side. And that's a, that's a new skill. And a man's skill right. is how to bring a woman back to her female side. We don't want to bring men to their female side. We want to bring men to their male side. Most men today are too much on their female side, which means practically, what does that mean? We're over emotional, mm -hmm. okay? We're over dependent. Over dependent means we have more uh, drug addictions, addictions, basically whatever it is, addiction to sports, nothing wrong with sports, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with moderate drugs or whatever, drinking alcohol, addiction to that. That's over dependence. That's your female hormones are increasing at that time. So it's like when a man's testosterone crashes, he, he lost his job. You know, he's not making enough money. He's, you know, he's not in a situation where he can feel good about himself. Solving problems, being successful raises testosterone. So you lose a job or you're not good at what you do or you're not making enough money. Your testosterone goes down. You don't feel as successful. When you don't feel as successful, your estrogen levels will start to rise. That's the female hormone. So then you start becoming depressed, irritable, and even anger. Anger is when your testosterone is turning into estrogen. Uh, men, if you look at some of the Chinese uh, masters, and in some cases, American movies, you'll see uh, that the, the cool guys are cool, calm, and collected. You know, they're not emotional. You don't get emotional. Uh, it's being uh, centered and mm -hmm. compassionate, but not reactive. And, oh, I'm so angry about this, or I'm so upset about this, and how dare you do that and say judgmental things. You're graceful about it, and you listen. You hear another person's point of view, and to a certain extent, you respect it, and then you can have your point of view. But as soon as you're getting emotional, 
in terms of having a conversation with somebody else, you're not respecting them. You're not understanding them. You're misreading them. You're fe seeing them as a threat. And even if they are a threat, you have to be a, 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 a karate master. Okay. I remember right. when I was a child, I was, I was in front of karate magazines as a little kid because I, I was, it was unique because I was so little. Okay. So I get, and I had to, I learned karate. So uh, this one of the teachers came from Japan who was the type of Okinawan karate that I did. Mm -hmm. And he, he's an old guy, you know, uh, he was sitting in a chair and he says, now attack me. And you would try to attack him and you're on the floor and you don't know what happened because he has right. studied every possible move. He has the skill and then it's effortless. He's not threatened. He actually can do more to you while sitting because you can't do as much with your body when somebody's sitting. So he's got all the moves down. He's practiced them. He's good at it. When you have the skill, you're cool, calm, and collected. If you're a competent workman and you have the tools you need and you have the skill, you don't get upset about anything. That's it's how you react, right? It's how you react. Okay. And if you're reacting in negative emotions, that means your estrogen levels are too high. They're threatening or they're weak, one or the other. It's fight or flight. Okay. And that when a woman hears that from a man, she has to go to her <clears throat> male side to become her own protector. You see, right. it makes sense. So you got some scary guy in front of you. You got to, whoa, I got to protect myself and protecting yourself. Nobody protecting you when you have to do it yourself. That's independence. That makes male hormones. And so what I've done is defined all the qualities like emotion is estrogen producing. Logic is testosterone mm -hmm. producing. So if a man's getting emotional, step back, stop talking. Talking about emotions is estrogen producing. Talking about what you think is testosterone producing if it's productive. So let's say I talk about what I think to my wife and she's getting more upset. I should stop talking. Doesn't that make sense? <laughs> be, be, do what's productive. That's the male side of us. And the right. other side of us is do not so much what's productive, what's loving. And if it's not loving, find your love. Because when women can talk about their feelings, if nobody resists, they'll come back to love. And that's what I do as a therapist. And finally, I learned to do that with my wife and my marriage got dramatically better. And you're mentioning you, you did my uh, bio from many years ago, my wife yeah. passed on four right. years ago. And I'm so sorry I about that. to her in present time, but I, I, I was broken. I mean, heartbroken. I, I still I have to write, write that book on healing yeah, a broken yeah. heart because it's pretty much healed now where I'm happier than I've ever been in my life because every heartbreak, if you heal it, you become a better person. You yeah. become a happier person. If you don't know how to heal it, it takes a skill to heal a heartbreak, just like you know, when I broke my arms as a little kid, I fell out of a tree head first, broke both arms, bones were sticking out, the skin uh, wasn't broken, but they're literally sticking out, brought me to the hospital, and they had to first reset the bones, and then put on a cast to hold it in that set for several months, and then you take off the cast, and your bones have grown back stronger, if you're young, they grow back stronger, now, you have a heartbreak, you've got to reset. What is the process of resetting? Well, one part of it is to forgive, very hard to forgive uh, in many cases. Or the other part is not to, if you feel bad about something or someone did something, you have to forgive, sometimes forgiving yourself. But the, the doorway to all of this, which most people, it's a very simple thing. When somebody does wrong to you, which most people went to heartbroken, they feel wrong. And if you're the one who feels guilty, then again, guilt, you're stuck in your guilt. You can't get out of it. You have to equalize. Mm -hmm. So when a man feels guilty, for example, or a woman feels victimized, those are two common things, but we can both feel like victims because we both have a male and female side. The female side feels like a victim. The male, male side, if there's self-reflection, feels guilty for what I didn't do, I could have done. Why didn't I do that? So I had to do both being on my male and female side. And the easiest part of the female side to heal, and I do this with all kinds of women, they come to me all the time and they blame their partners. They feel like victims. And I say, do you know your role in that? Are you aware of your role mm -hmm. in his reactions? And they're not aware of it. Yeah. It doesn't even come into their awareness. They, Because they truly think they're doing good. Just like every man up to a certain point truly thinks he's doing the best thing for her. And it's tell, until you have new knowledge, you can't regret what you did. And that's what I provide is, hey, you know what? First, of, there's a lot of things that help people to forgive what he thought he was doing. He didn't know better, but also you. That's when it really hits in. You said this, you did this. 
why did you do that? And they always say, because he did this and this and this and this. I said, right. yeah, that's true. But you did that. And what else could you have done? And they don't know what else could have been done. They don't know that they have the ability to change how they feel by changing what they think, by changing what they do, changing what their perception of reality is. Right. If I think the only way I can get out of my office is to climb through that door, go into the bathroom and climb out that window, and that's the only way to get out, it's kind of a bummer, but I'll accept it. It's a bummer. And then somebody comes along and says, John, there's another doorway. It's right in front of you, right there. I didn't know that. I didn't see that. <laughs> then it's like, oh my God, I'm such a fool. I was doing all that. It was like, I don't need to do that. It's easy. Right. Most, of, most of my messages are easy because I reveal a skill and an insight and a knowing that our culture does not teach people. And to some extent, teaches just the opposite of what works. I want to talk about hormones because you mentioned, you talk about it in Beyond Mars and Venus. And you, and you mentioned it several times here. So, you know, I'm at that age, my wife's at that age where, you know, she's going through menopause or, and I'm going through that age where maybe my testosterone might go down a little bit, you know? Uh, can I, can I, can I increase my testosterone? Should I, is there things or supplements that I should do outside of behaviors, uh, you know, in terms of diet, or is there anything I should, is it, is it healthy for me if I want to increase my testosterone and I find some supplement that promises to increase my testosterone? Is that going to help me? Or what is your, now that you have put merged this into your idea of relationships, how should we as a couple be thinking about our home hormones on, on that level? Very, very, very important. Yeah. A 400 page book, <laughs> but I'll, I'll give you the, the short version of it. Okay. Yeah. And first of all, I'm an expert at this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm 70 years old. My testosterone levels are 50% higher than when I was a young man. Okay. I've always had a great sex life. I have an even better sex life now because I've, the last part of our marriage, it was even better, but I really refined my skills as I get older to where you learn as a man how this is only one little piece of it this is but it's an important piece you learn how to have sex without ejaculating okay it's okay. a highly significant we don't teach anybody this in this world but if you learn how to have sex without ejaculating you can have many many orgasms and after sex you don't lose the desire to have sex uh, there's a natural recovery time after you have sex when, when i say when you have sex when you ejaculate for a man when he ejaculates his testosterone will surge, but his estrogen will surge as well. And so the next day, his testosterone will go back down to what we'll call baseline. Now, baseline in our society, it's proven, goes down a percent every year. So if you're just staying, hanging out at baseline and you, you've you got to do something extra to stop, to not be your average guy, your average guy at 50 is half the testosterone of a young man. Okay, right. so, and, and now it's even worse. It's, it's a lowering of testosterone. This has huge ramifications for vitality, for motivation, for energy. You know, most people think a guy, when he gets to his 50s, he's starting to think about retiring. Well, that's just a, symp that's a symptom of low testosterone. See, not enough energy and motivation. Motivation. Even many of my friends at my age, <laughs> they go, you're like some kind of sex addict, John. What do you need so much sex for? I'm, I'm over it. I'm done with it. I said, okay, you want to see if you're done with it? Go get an injection of testosterone and see if you're done with it. Uh, but the problem is taking an injection of testosterone is a temporary shortcut that damages your body. Okay, it actually causes your balls to shrink. Your balls aren't making enough testosterone. So you want to find out why. Right. Okay, so there's many things to increase that. The ultimate, which is why I'm 50% higher, is I don't ejaculate. It never goes down. But the mm -hmm. average man, when you have sex, your testosterone, this is a study, okay? This is research, been repeated research. A man has sex on Saturday night, mm -hmm. great sex, okay? Then the testosterone the next day goes down to baseline, whatever his baseline is. Now he has sex two days later and he has sex, has good sex probably, and then it goes down to baseline. And he keeps repeating that pattern. There's another pattern you can create. You have sex one night a week, the research shows. If you have sex, only ejaculate. And the word is ejaculation because a, a lot of guys aren't having sex once a week and their testosterone levels are going down, but they're doing this, okay? Right. <laughs> they're ejaculating. Once, every time you ejaculate, your testosterone goes down to baseline. If you can wait six days without ejaculating, 
On the seventh day, if you have a sexual partner who's real, your testosterone levels will increase 50%. Okay. That's a dramatic thing. You see, in the beginning of a relationship, couples have a lot of sex and they enjoy it a lot because there's newness. But once newness fades into comfort and familiarity, the dopamine levels are not at these high drug levels to make your testosterone go up and feel alive, you know, like you took cocaine. So that goes away as familiarity sets in. Mm -hmm. So you don't get free dopamine, which raises your testosterone up so high. And then you ejaculate and then it goes back down. But then over time, all you have to do is have sex twice a week or three times a week or four times a week or every day. Some couples have it every day. And then after about six, seven years, his testosterone levels are dramatically lower. And usually at that point, many couples will just break up because they, many people today want lasting romance. Not everybody does, but many people do. So if you can create that excitement every time you get into bed, amazing. And that's if you learn how to give up masturbation, period. Period. So I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about all men. Mm -hmm. yeah, masturbation is just going to lower your testosterone levels. And now we have evidence of it. You see, I was teaching this a long time ago because I understood I was a celibate monk, never masturbated for nine years. Wow. Okay. I learned, I learned how to do that. Mm -hmm. So not, not feeling sexual tension, just go get in a cold bath, get in a cold shower and it will go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's unless you have a woman who loves you, then have sex with her. And they've even done studies showing that if you have a woman who loves you, your body makes different hormones than if you have sex with porn or with yourself or with a stranger, a one night stand, your body actually makes different hormones. If you make love to your wife and you have sex with her just once a week, once a week means every time you have sex with her, her your testosterone levels will be 50% higher and her estrogen levels will go 50% higher and she'll enjoy sex more. Okay. The higher your testosterone levels are, we know now that men's testosterone goes up in the presence of a woman, her estrogen levels go up. If a woman's estrogen levels go up in the presence of a man, his testosterone levels go up. It's all a function of your hormones. Now, as she gets older, it doesn't matter if she's not making as many hormones. It's the mm -hmm. balance of her female hormones versus her testosterone versus her male hormones. Everything is about finding the balance at different ages of life. You need, you need a different balance according to what makes you feel happy and good. So I have a friend, his girlfriend is, he's my age, he's 70, but his girlfriend's 78. And they have sex three times a week, but they practice it without ejaculating. He knows how to do it. Okay. So, See, we all have a, the deepest addiction. You know, like if somebody does something mean to you or whatever, cheat you, you're going to feel angry. Right. Okay. That's your animal. That's not your human side. Your human side is going to say, all right, how can I get my money back? Or I never want to do business with that person again. Or, well, that was foolish of me. I learned an important lesson. You don't need to be angry about that person. It's your monkey brain. This, this part of the brain that when you don't get what you want, you have a negative emotion. Okay. And so what we learn is, I can feel those emotions and let them go just like that. I don't want to disconnect with my, my monkey brain. I have things that upset me and bother me, but I've learned how to let them go. That's another thing I teach. That's called emotional intelligence. That anytime you're angry, upset, afraid, you're, you're, you're basically telling yourself a lie. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're telling yourself. Now, I understand why you're angry and stuff because you're telling yourself a lie. You're saying I'm in danger. And so what you do is you oh, okay, I'm in danger. What am I thinking? Now you look at your fear, what you're thinking, and then you analyze that fear and go, well, I'm not really in danger. So emotions serve a purpose to help us realize our thinking is wrong. And this is beyond everybody's thinking. You know, you got a therapist, oh, you should be angry and upset about this. And I say the same thing. You should be, because you're not feeling your emotions. And now you should let go of those emotions because you're believing <laughs> you're, all, you're helpless, you're not good enough, they're not good enough, whatever. So negative emotions serve an important person for just to keep us connected who we are as human beings because we aren't just human we're monkeys people have to get that your sex desire is your monkey self okay angels don't have sex <laughs> we're, we're we're monkeys we're humans and then when a human can reflect on their mistakes and change from their mistakes they're divine so those are our three sides to be human is to make mistakes to be divine and human <laughs> it's to look at your mistakes with love and change and dedicate yourself this is like growth if you're not growing as a human being to a divine being you're going to be depressed going downhill divine is just love that's what i mean by it and you grow and becoming a better person so if every day you're doing something to become a better person your testosterone levels will start going up 
And if you're trying to be a better person and you're not, and your testosterone is going down, you have to go, okay, what am I doing wrong here? What's missing? So here's another thing. I'm eating too much. All mm -hmm. right. If you eat too much, your testosterone levels will go down. Eating too much is depending. Whenever you're depending on something outside yourself to feel good as a man, it's different for women, but for men to feel good, you eat and you go, oh, this is tastes so good. I'm going to eat more. What you're doing is increasing estrogen and lowering testosterone. So you can increase your testosterone dramatically by doing intermittent fasting. And that's for women to find hormonal balance, intermittent, but only for the 10 days at the start of your period is the only time you can fast. Otherwise, it makes you very, very crazy. But men are different. We can mm -hmm. fast anytime. And what we should do is you start with intermittent fasting where you skip a meal and you learn to discipline yourself where you're not so dependent on food to make you feel good. Then you start doing two-day fasting and three-day day. Every year I do a 30-day fast. This year I did so it's called something called Bigu, where I went into silence for a week, had a mask on, didn't talk to anybody, had a glass of water every day and a cup of coffee, and that was it. Wow. Amazing experience. Yeah. But boy, my testosterone levels are like, you know, I can feel my abs, I feel my chest, I feel my muscles. You really, you're... Uh, testosterone goes way up. And that's been proven. If you fast and you're a man, your testosterone levels will dramatically increase. So it's, and what that is, if you analyze the character of that, besides the physiological phenomena of not depending. See, it's like, you know, the whole idea of when boys, you know, go through their initiation in the primitive days in American Indians is they would go on a, a spirit quest or something like that. It's called, and they have to go out and be alone for seven days and not have any food. I mean, this is an amazing experience. And then they would get a vision and know who they are and what their purpose in life was. Right. We're so namby-pamby. We're all just spoiled. And when men get spoiled, what we do is we become dependent on other things to make us happy. We should always, if ever you're angry with your spouse or your children or whatever, you're looking too much for them, for their approval of you. You're too needy. That's too much estrogen. So there's disciplines like never, ever complain out loud is another one. Just catch yourself, mm -hmm. suck it up, and then reflect on what you're complaining about and turn it into a request. That's okay. Turn it into what I want because every complaint is just the monkey brain <laughs> complaining, trying to get something as opposed to become clear about what you want and then go and ask for it or go get it, but not with negativity. Every time you use negativity to get what you want, you train yourself to be a monkey. See, monkeys can't communicate effectively. So the only way they can get somebody to change is, is to say, ow. And then if you didn't change, I'll go, ow, ow. And then if they don't change after that, you pull up a club and you hit them with a club, ow, ow, ow. See, this is all primitive stuff. And it's inside of mm -hmm. all of us. It's inside of me, you know, it's right. there. But I don't indulge it. I become aware of it. And so the, the key is not to deny your female side, your <laughs> emotional side, if it's negative emotions, don't act on it, but take time to rebuild your testosterone. That's why in my books, I talk about cave time. Cave time is what rebuilds your testosterone. And cave time for me is what freed me from the addiction to ejaculate. Mm -hmm. See, I was a monk for nine years. I get what it is and the power it gives to you to not ejaculate except through love. But even when you have sex through love, too much actually lowers your testosterone, as I've just explained as opposed to increasing it again and again and increasing her estrogen. So that's A. And then B is if you have sex with someone you love, that means you feel love. And the reason for having sex generally, if people can now become aware, is to feel love. See, the reason for the monkey brain to have sex is it makes babies and it feels really, really good. But the reason for us to have sex is it feels really, really good. Sometimes we want to make baby monkeys. But... <laughs> <laughs> but we're doing it to feel our love because see we as men with more muscle mass we're more armored we don't have as much estrogen we have more testosterone so we can't always feel love we can love our partners but we don't always feel the love that we can feel through sex that's what's called making love okay because when now when you're feeling it's so pleasurable you have no resistance and when you have no resistance the love in your heart can come forth so men have to recognize why am i doing this because it helps me get in touch and feel the love i have for my partner does that mean he doesn't love his partner? No, it's just he can't fully feel until his estrogen levels are going up. And estrogen levels go very high when it's somebody who, who you're loving, you care about them. 
So now you've got your estrogen levels with your partner and you're also your testosterone because you're still hard. So this is a relationship. They measured people in relationships, what hormones get produced after sex compared to masturbation or porn or having an affair or cheating on your partner, those kind of things are, are paying for it with, with prostitution. Okay, so you've got somebody who you're truly loving and you're growing in love together and you have a commitment to each other. You care about a future with somebody. Those are all the factors of marriage. Now, when you have marriage and a, and a loving relationships making love, they test the hormone and what gets produced is a hormone called prolactin. And the function of prolactin mm -hmm. in a man's body is to inhibit his desire to plant his seed somewhere else. This is nature. Uh, interesting. This is where monogamy comes from. Monogamy comes from prolactin in men and you generate prolactin in you by having sex with somebody who loves you and you're committed to them. Now, if you're committed to them, it actually makes a particular hormone uh, of commitment. They measure these voles and they find that that hormone, when it's high in certain types of these little voles, they're highly committed. And the others who don't make that hormone <laughs> have no commitment. They're fooling around all the time. Well, if you make love with someone you're committed to, you will make that hormone. You don't just have to be a particular kind of vol that has that. No, we can generate that if we make the commitment. Many men just don't make the commitment. We become too feminine. Ironically, the feminine side of us doesn't want to make commitment. It wants to do what you like, do what you like. In the 60s, this is when the change started happening big time in our <clears throat> culture. I grew up my hair. I had girls' hair. I wore, mm -hmm. I was fashionable. I wore beads and I was hippie and I had boots and bell-bottom pants and looked at my outfit and aren't I cool? I demonstrated for peace I, against Vietnam. You know, I wouldn't go to Vietnam. How can I get out of that? See, this is not the traditional male who's going to go out there and protect his family. You know, he's like, how do I get out of it? I want to do what I like. You know, the music of that time was do what you like, do what you like. Free love. I don't have to make a commitment. Hey, I'm turned on to you. Let's do it. Freedom. Okay. To do what you like instead of freedom to overcome the challenges that you want to make a better life. You see, men have to be challenged to make testosterone. We mm -hmm. have to overcome hurdles. Uh, one of the things I did during COVID to keep my testosterone up because I couldn't travel. You know, if you travel and teach, for example, huge obstacles, huge challenges. When's my plane going to get there? Who's going to pick me up? How do I do this? You know, you have to be challenged in life and it gets too easy for men. They're easy is estrogen producing. Challenging is testosterone producing. If you think in your mind, I have to do something that's testosterone producing. I get to do something. I like doing something that's estrogen producing. Now it's good if you have what I have to do and I happen to like what I do. That's the balance, male and female. You're sitting there listening to me. You like doing this and you have to do this. This is your thing. But when it comes to eating, you could be eating too much. Your belly, belly fat in a man produces estrogen and estrogen lowers testosterone. Fasting Clear, besides being disciplined, any type of discipline you have, you're building testosterone. You're, I mean, who wants to, <laughs> what discipline is doing what you don't like doing, but you do it for a noble cause, okay? It could be boring, right. could be threatening, could be painful. You know, I'm listening to Joe Rogan all the time talking about, you know, he gets these muscles, these fighters in there and they talk about, oh, I get up at four o'clock every day and I do, you know, five miles and then I feel like I've done the day. Would you like doing that? I hate doing that. Are you kidding? I hate it, but I'm done the day. I feel great for the rest of the day. Joe Rogan jumps in his hot, freezing, cold thing, you know, the cold plunge. Which right. I understand when I was a monk, I used to do a cold plunge uh, every morning. It also helped me. And I did not want to do it. You know, I, <laughs> I said, all right, I'll do it. I did it. You know, you, you endure and you suffer. And so that's when life gets too easy, comfortable, cozy, test estrogen goes up testosterone goes down, men need 10 times more just to be healthy. And you need to be making 20 times more once a week if you want it to continue rising for a lifetime. Now, I don't, on that last thing, I don't have a lot of documentation because I have more. Right. <laughs> I've tested myself watching this, what happens. And if when I challenge myself, my testosterone will go up. If I go on a vacation, where, you know, my wife and kids, and we're all just going to a nice hotel. People are feeding us. I don't have to do anything except reserve the cabana. <laughs> Real simple stuff. Test, check my testosterone levels after that. They just dropped down half, basically. You know, you got to mm -hmm. keep them up. And so these are, those are some and herbs and support. I, I don't do them anymore. I, otherwise, I'd be 
too horny all the time. You see, right now, I'm never horny <laughs> except when it's available and my partner's interested. And if my testosterone never goes down after sex, my partner will always be interested. See, that's the thing. Men all complain, oh, my partner's not that interested. Well, you just haven't been 50% higher every time you had sex with her because then her body is accustomed to being feeling special at least once a week. And that's the time, at least once a week, biologically, animals, the monkey inside once a month has to have the estrogen double to, be, to ovulate. Okay, mm -hmm. if you don't ovulate, then you're thrown away by nature unless you know how to double your estrogen levels. And that's how women can continue to have healthy estrogen, no menopausal problems. If they're, uh, uh, as they get older, naturally the eggs aren't there to make the estrogen. The adrenal gland can make enough estrogen for her to have great sex and to feel feminine, but she'll naturally feel more masculine as well. It's a natural thing of aging for women to go to becoming more masculine to balance their female. And for men to go to their female, is natural. Female side of us is when we have wisdom. We don't get upset about stuff. We kind mm -hmm. of been through all that. <laughs> What's the point of being angry about that? What's the point of being stressed out about that? What's the point of trying to do everything? Forget it. I'm going to have a good time. So wisdom comes along. That's our female side. Women today, to a great extent, have lost their female side. Uh, you know, yeah. they're basically, they don't, the where's the wisdom when you say, uh, there's too much to do. I have no time. There's always enough time. And you don't have to do everything. No, but I said I would do it. Well, who did that? Who's rolling? <laughs> Why do you take on so much? It's like not very smart to do. So, but they have a wisdom of finding balance, but they often say, oh, I have no time for me. I have no time for me. And, and a guy kind of goes, gee, I have all the time for me. <laughs> that's because right. we have, that's a male wisdom. But the female wisdom is to be happy, to be loving, to be fulfilled, to take it easy, and to balance that with being productive and being of service to others. And now the heterosexual couples have it much easier. Why? Because they have babies. And when you make a baby and you're a woman, now you want to give to that baby. Giving of yourself is actually masculine. It's testosterone producing. Mm -hmm. That's why all unhappy women in marriages that come to me say, I give and I give and I give, <laughs> but I don't get back. Right. The giving didn't make them that happy, did it? Okay. What makes them happy is getting back. Uh, and so it's like learning the art of how to receive, how to get what you want from a man, how to bring the best part of a man out, or how you unknowingly sabotage your relationships, bringing out the worst in a man, just like we men sabotage our relationships by bringing out the worst of a woman. We have the power. You know, my partner I have right now, I just go, oh my gosh, if I didn't know what I know now, this relationship would be a disaster. Uh, you know, my partner is like a, a wild horse, you know, you got to know how to ride that horse and make friends with that horse. <laughs> and she just walked into the room. Uh, I'm just finished <laughs> the interview. <laughs> Hi, you look lovely. Look lovely. Absolutely. Wonderful. So for the people, By the way, any men watching, if you're not saying to your partner every day, you look lovely, you're missing out on huge Estrogen I vouch for that. Produced in her and testosterone goes up in you. So those, and then one other thing, th two suggestions on supplement level, because I'm an expert. I used to have a health food store online. Mm -hmm. The most powerful thing for women's hormonal was a product from Korea, which you can buy now in all stores here called Estro-G. Estro-G mm -hmm. is three Asian herbs that will take away your menopause symptoms, help you start balancing hormone at any age. If you have period problems or you want more estrogen balance, it's not estrogen. It's helping your body remember how to make these things. So that's estro G. Okay. For men, the most powerful hormone for two supplements is one is called Tonkat Ali. Now, what Tonkat Ali does is it cleans your liver out of bad estrogens, gets them out of your body, and it also sends a message to your balls to make more testosterone. It's not testosterone, and it doesn't make you horny. There's some things that will make you horny, but what if you don't have any testosterone? Just being horny is not the answer. So the real key one, and all of your libido products will have Tonkat Ali in it under okay. different, but it's Tonkat Ali. T-O-N-E? T-O-N-G. Okay. K-A-T. Okay. A-L-I. Got it. And you'll see they'll put other herbs in it, which are okay herbs, but the real big one is Tonkat Ali. And there's another uh, mineral support, uh, which is um, called Sheila Jeet. S H I she S H I L I J I T and mm -hmm. a huge testosterone producer in your body. Sheila Jeet. It's uh, you can only harvest it off of the Himalayas in the springtime and mm -hmm. it comes out of the mountains and it's a very rich form of mineral. 
highly potent and something called fulvic acid. You're getting down to one of the, what they call as the conquer or the empowerment, the sacred herb, you know, but it was very mm -hmm. hard to get to. Now they've gotten to it and they know how to purify it. So that's shilajit. So those two things, power will come forth in your body. That's feeling powerful is always testosterone. Feeling soft and loving and cuddly, that's your oxytocin, your estrogen. Feeling friendship is your progesterone. And so these are all like key hormones. It's just that men really just need the testosterone and everything else comes along with it. But taking testosterone doesn't give you all those benefits. Taking right. testosterone then doesn't in the long term and actually inhibits your ability to produce testosterone later in life. Okay. <clears throat> For the people that are, are listening and they're saying, well, how can I avoid ejaculation? Is, is there techniques that you recommend for that? You mean when you're having sex? Right. Okay, well, you, you need about a good six months of never masturbating. Okay, that would be at least a beginning point. We're okay. using willpower, not masturbating. The se and, and it can be more sophisticated. I'm gonna give you the basics, okay? So, so now you're, you go through the steps. You don't ever masturbate. And you could go for nine years that way. I was nine years, no masturbation right. until I got in relationships. And then I learned how to have sex once a week. And that will keep your testosterone and your attraction for a lifetime, sex once a week. Then mm -hmm. the next, and you have to be regular with it. You can't just mm -hmm. stop. Once you stop, you go back. So if your partner's not in the mood, you say, okay, we're still going to have sex on Saturday night. We have to do it at least once a week. It's like, we have to eat here, don't we? And so I'll just give you a massage and touch you. And if you want to have more, I'll give you more. Okay, so it's a man giving to the woman. And what woman's gonna turn down a foot massage and then a body massage and maybe a bath together? You know, we're gonna do something naked eventually. Okay, you gotta get to that place. And she's standing here on my beautiful <laughs> <laughs> smiling. Okay, so uh, so then what he does, okay, now you, you're preparing the body. Certain exercises you have to do, you have to lose belly fat to a great extent. You've got to lower estrogen levels. Mm -hmm. Estrogen is what makes the ejaculation. If your estrogen is too high, when you're aroused, what's happening is both your testosterone is going up and your estrogen is going up. And then at a certain point when estrogen goes too high, it goes so high, your body can't handle that much pleasure. Estrogen is also pleasure. Then what your body will do is it short circuits. It says done. And basically your body can't handle that much pleasure and your testosterone shoots down like right away, your, your desire to be close to her disappears, right? You know, that tense of wanting to turn over to the other side. That's your testosterone levels dropping, or at least moving in the direction of lowering your estrogen. Anytime mm -hmm. you're pulling away, it's your lowering estrogen so your testosterone can start to become up. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's the next stage, all right? Then what you do is you don't, you know, you're gonna get really horny only having sex once a week. <laughs> Those days, you don't touch yourself, you don't have sex, you go take a cold shower, get in your cold plunge, that's an easy one. Exercising at that time is an easy thing to do. You've got to give your body other ways to take that energy and use it. If you're a piano player, play a lot of piano. You know, you've got to take the energy and use it. So now you're going to also learn to lose a lot of the weight in your belly. That's hard to lose at all, but you lose a lot of weight in your belly. That means you're knocking down estrogen. See, body fat produces estrogen. Mm -hmm. high estrogen then causes ejaculation so now what you want is balanced testosterone now when you have sex there's a what's called masters and johnson described this it was uh four phases of average sex okay you have arousal stage you just feel really good you're excited whatever you're doing if this feels good to move your body around to kiss to touch body parts that are different from yours okay that's all it takes and so the, there's a lot more that takes, because see, if a woman undresses in front of you, she's also saying, I trust you and you're safe. See, that safety is what allows her estrogen to go up, her estrogen going up causes your testosterone to go up. So now you're on what's called arousal phase. Arousal, for some men, it's, uh, I'm already there at, at two minutes or three minutes, so you're arousing phase. Then some men, it takes longer because they don't have as much estrogen. So it's gonna take a while for them to get to what's called a plateau. The arousal isn't as intense either. But so you have arousal going up. Then what you have, and this is what they found when all their research on people, is you have what's called the plateau. The plateau is no longer, is the arousal so automatic. And now you're like trying to keep the arousal. You see, arousal is increasing energy. 
So now you're doing things, you know, can, can I find another hole? Can I find another position? <laughs> can I find another thing to do? You're, you're looking for more. And these are all very subtle. It takes time to learn where that plateau is because the plateau is actually when your body's ability to receive energy, pleasure has reached its peak for that moment. And now you're at a plateau, it won't go any further. And if you stay at the plateau, going along doing what you're doing, basically very quickly within a minute to two minutes, you're gonna, you're gonna have uh, an orgasm, an orgasm, which to everybody means ejaculation. You, you go up and so the energy shoots up and you have your ejaculation and then it goes way down. And that's the cycle for men. Now, what's really happening energetically is when the, when are we following? Okay, you have a yeah, question? Yeah. Okay, so the arousal, once you hit arousal, that means you just hit 100% of the energy that you can handle of pleasure without your estrogen going too high. So now what you want is you want everything to calm down. So basically you, you, get, you, you start finding out if I'm gonna ejaculate soon, now I'm gonna slow down and that's called edging. You have to practice edging, getting to the edge and then stopping. Then you try another position. That's one way of doing it. Uh, and that's how it was done in the past when there are lots of these tantric positions people would do mm -hmm. is you would edge up to the point where if you keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna ejaculate. So let's make a change. And that gives you time sort of to reorganize yourself to relax. So you're not trying to increase the pleasure at that time. And then you start over and you start over. One of the ancient tantric texts on this was the secret of long lasting sex is start over again and again and again. Because <laughs> if you really review sex, the most fulfilling part of it is arousal. It, right, you just right. go, it just feels so good. And then we try to maintain it. And then we have this very feel good uh, ejaculation without a doubt. Now ejaculation is the turning off of arousal. It's the mm -hmm. turning it off. Now, why do we want to turn off arousal? See, what happened right before the ejaculation is your arousal became too much and too much is not a good thing. So now you practice getting close to the edge and then doing something else. You can have a conversation. You can say, you know, I love you so much. Just stop moving in your body. Just stop the penetration and just stay where you are. Anything that's increasing stimulation, don't do it at that time. Instead, what you do is you, you might talk from your heart. You might, you might, you know, in the old days, what they said, think of baseball scores, you know, that's using your head, but better than thinking of baseball skills. Think about how much you love your partner and communicate that to them, talk to them. Also make loud noises, okay? So make loud noises, which is a very monkey thing for women to do, very smart thing for men to do as well. The best, no, best noise is the primal noise of the first letter of the alphabet. Ah, ah, right. ah, you know, all opera singers practice all the time going, ah. <laughs> now, fortunately I have three acres so people don't hear me but that will also take the energy up. Now, some people think take a deep breath, that doesn't work for me, but uh, <laughs> that just makes me come. So uh, another thing is look at what your body does when you actually do have an ejaculation. That's what your body does to remove the intensity. So the same movement of your pelvis, you do that whenever you get close to the edge, just do that, okay? And that releases the energy through your body and then do it again and do it again. It's a little shaking movement that you do in your pelvis moving back and forth like that. And just watch what you, boom, boom, boom. And they'll be, ch -ch 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 -ch. That's, that's that way your body releases excess energy prior right. to the ejaculation. Part of the biological mm. reason for ejaculation for another reason is you're too turned on and your body will heat up. And if, you, if your balls heat up, they kill the sperm. So your body says, when I'm, when I'm that excited, kill the, you're gonna kill the sperm and you can't make a baby. But also energetically, we talked about energetic fields and so mm -hmm. forth. If a woman is stressed, her energy has to go as high as your energy. So what will happen is if she has any inhibitions to receiving your energy, then you'll feel a pressure to ejaculate. You'll edge faster because your energy is higher than hers. You know, we get, get in bed if you're horny and you're so excited, ready to go, and she's not, then you're gonna to wanna to ejaculate further if you have enough estrogen. So it's again, your energy has to calm, hers, as hers becomes excited, you have to match her excitement. 
And so it's not about you, it's about her, and then you matching her excitement. So that's another fact factor of the whole thing. That's what helps me is to remember why am I even doing this? Because right. I could just do 10 strokes and it'd be more exciting. But if I don't <laughs> do that, and about 30 minutes later, after about 10 little orgasms, it's really, really exciting. And you realize it's the energy you feel, it's the pleasure you feel that turns into the love you feel that allows you, that's the, and she will have the, the female orgasm response and then you feel one with that. A lot of little tricks that I teach men, and I have a class called Secrets of Great Sex at marsvenus.com. Mm -hmm. And I'm sharing with you some of the things I don't teach in that class because I, I eventually want to update that class because I've learned more. Yeah. One of the other things I didn't teach in that class is the, the, you know, the four layers of a woman's vagina. She has to be able to receive your energy at every level. You have to build it up, build it up, build it up. And so you don't penetrate all the way right away. You know, a lot of these guys, they just start, they just go all the way in. It's just like her body can't receive that. If her body can't receive that, then your energy is blocked. That creates a tension. And now you ejaculate to release the tension. So this is the thing of, of going slow, getting first to the, you know, the, the outside of the vagina, then go about an inch in there then you're going to find the g spot and then behind that when you go a little deeper about two inches more and should have more there's an e spot that will only if the only if the clitoris gets stimulated generally speaking then the g spot actually rises up it's like the size of a coin then behind that is the e spot and you go a little deeper and then you go all the way to the c spot which is her cervix it needs to come down to touch you and at that point you don't even have to pump it's just simply just a, a actually you're not stroking you're just a little pump and she has an orgasm right. <laughs> another, pump and she has another orgasm you don't have to always go all the way in and all the way out okay there's layers to this so take your time and enjoy the whole thing and then you become multi-orgasmic as she is multi-orgasmic fascinating it's very fascinating it's a whole <laughs> it's a whole other skill set of how to play monopoly yeah. win every time you know exactly See? Well, John, I want to thank you so much for spending some time with me. And I've learned so much. I, I'm sure we could talk forever on so many other things. I mean, I barely only asked a couple of questions. Thank you for, for answering them so fully. I appreciate it immensely. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, if, you and, get, if you get questions from your audience, I'll be happy to do it again with you. Absolutely. And, and once again, MarsVenus.com, Mars Venus Coaching, um, where you can learn to coach some of these skills. And there's you can also find a Mars Venus coach. Also yes, absolutely. And there's some amazing books that you've written that go beyond this. And so I, I, I go on Amazon, look up John Gray, and you'll see the list. It's amazing. There's so but, much. But let me be realistic. When I'm talking about multi-orgasmic man and, and 50% higher testosterone, you got to throw a procedure. You have to get there. <laughs> it's yes, not like overnight this happens. Absolutely. So for sex, I would recommend couples start with sex once a week, no masturbation, and read the book Mars Venus in the Bedroom, and or take my class online. Okay. And I will have a class online which details a lot of what I just shared with you. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. It was so nice and an honor to meet you. Thank you so much for all that you've done in helping so many couples understand their relationships and helping love to blossom on this planet. It's an amazing over the, all the years that you've done this. Um, what you've done for love. So I, I got to thank you for that. I mean, that that's a huge service. Thank you so much, John. Oh, you're, you're so welcome for recognizing that, Brian. And we'll just keep plodding along, helping couples at these trying times, helping couples find peace, find love, find understanding. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. Well, thank you, John. And I hope to talk to you again soon. And welcome to the Reality Revolution. Thank you. Thank you.